Hey there, Inframe out here. This is just an opening disclaimer to let you know the nature of what we're going to be covering today and to give y'all a heads up. When ragtag crews of class-cutting kids in the 80s and 90s started borrowing their parents' camcorders to document the nascent art of skating rails and brutal bales, little did they know they were kick-starting a roof-jumping, dry-humping trend of countercultural pranksters. CKY applied their abrasive japes with scuzzbag credibility, which in turn spawned the anarchic crossover success of Jackass. Not long after these classless clowns graduated to the big leagues, a few dozen or so also ran stepped up to try and replicate their knowingly dumb anarchic fun. Most of these copycats were harmless, unless you count sprained ankles and harsh haircuts. With one excruciating exception. I'm a fighting it's bum fight. Bum fights. Born of a malignant misunderstanding of the joyous, self-inflicted idiocy of CKY and Jackass, where the cathartic laughter came from the enthusiastic extroverts channeling Buster Keaton by way of Looney Tunes, Bumfights was an actively harmful, mean-spirited minor league copycat that tragically snowballed into the cynical commodification of maliciousness. It's a story that starts with drunken dares, peaks with millions of dollars in ill-gotten gains, and ends with degradation, death, Dr. Phil, and at least one act so heinous, when you hear it, you'll think it's fiction. BFK. Bumfuck crew, man. As part of an attempt to emulate the lucrative and ludicrous countercultural carnality of Jackass Gonzo excursions, aspiring videographer Ryan McPherson took to capturing kickflips and tooth chips in and around La Mesa, San Diego. It was here this teenage nobody forged an unlikely kinship with two worse for wear unsheltered men named Donnie Brennan and Rufus Hanna. Hey, you want a dollar? We got some money. We got a nickel, I think. Can you do some stuff for video? What's that? Rufus? Yeah. That's your name, right? Hey, hey what's up? What you want me to do? Um, <laughs> there's some crates back there you can walk into. <laughs> Shit. Yeah! <laughs> and so, a fruitful bond was built. One that would make McPherson rich, and this endearing pair of unhoused alcoholics into the Knoxville and Stevo of running headfirst into things while brown bagging it at the bodega. You know, we showed it to millions of kids out there in San Diego, and everyone had the same response. They were just shocked and couldn't believe it. They all thought it was better than the jackass and the CKY stuff, and that, that was good. Or at least that's the narrative McPherson has perpetuated and how he remembers it. He was pushy, like to have his way. In reality, bum fights would come to be defined by courthouses, prison bars, emergency rooms, morgues, and above all else, the inexcusable brutalization and exploitation of the unhoused and ignored of America. Some say the ultimate in shock TV. It's Bum Fights, Cause for Concern, Volume 1. Produced in collaboration with the Indecline Art Collective, the setup, payoff, and overall presentation of the first volume of Bum Fights is as simple and sickening as the title suggests. You want me to let you go? Yeah. Okay, fine, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you. Hannah, who would become ubiquitously known as Rufus the Stunt Bum, Brennan, and a colourful ensemble of unsheltered individuals with substance use disorders, moderate to severe mental health concerns, and or limited access to the most basic of human necessities, are offered meagre financial, chemical, or sexual incentives to injure, debase, dehumanise, or criminally implicate themselves on camera. Here are just a few of the indignities that marginalised persons on this tape are subjected to. Hair is set on fire without consent. A crew member urinates in a beer bottle and then tricks an alcoholic into drinking it. Rough sleepers are pelted with rocks. Front teeth are yanked out with pliers. Uh, his tooth bothered him and he wanted to pull it out. We just filmed it. You filmed it? Yeah. Passers-by are assaulted with decomposing roadkill, men are knocked unconscious without receiving any medical aftercare, and so on and so on. 
and as mortifying as all those acts are, they pale in comparison to some of the torturous conduct carried out as this series progresses. In short, Bum Fights is a warped slideshow where folks in need of empathy, assistance and targeted support are exploited ad nauseum and left with life-altering afflictions for as little as five dollars. A montage of hell where the stars were allegedly tricked into signing away their likeness and compensatory rights after being plied with drugs and alcohol by the producers. Man, all they were doing was looking for homeless people so they can make millions and millions and millions of dollars. What did I get out of it? Nothing! Now let's look at a few of the recurring segments you can look forward to from the Bum Fight cinematic universe. There's Crates, a spoof of cribs where they just make fun of people living under a bridge. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. Everybody don't get to see that kind of shit around here now that. Crack Ho's Gone Wild, which is exactly what you think it is. Bum Hunter is a crocodile hunter pastiche in which a Steve Irwin lookalike goes to an unhoused encampment in the middle of the night and forcibly detains sleeping men by binding their hands, mouths, and ankles with duct tape as they let out agonized pleas for help. We got a live one here, guys. Okay. This one's a little crazy here, guys. And if this all wasn't enough, we then get Bum Patrol, where the producers feloniously impersonate police officers and threaten to shoot a random black man before robbing him and leaving him zip tied by the side of the road. Hands fed up! You will get a cow fucked in your motherfucking ass, you look at us again! Turn the fuck around! Turn the fuck around! If you're not feeling the thermite burn of gnashing hatred for the folks behind this right about now, then you're probably not listening hard enough. All this footage of unsheltered folks being bludgeoned, beaten, or devalued is interspersed with randomly scattered shots of bar fights, public brawls, and a woman in her underpants, because at the end of the day, maliciously taking advantage of people on the streets requires some effort, so why not just fill in some of the blanks with a monstrous aberration of America's funniest home videos? All of the bile that I've just highlighted is paired and presented with the skate tape aesthetics of alt-rock soundtracks and a YouTube poops caliber of attention deficit editing for a final product somewhere between snuff film cynicism and a low-res sociopathic travelogue. Bum fights had become faces of death by way of backyard wrestling and the kind of moral panic media frenzy that marketing execs dream about. It looks like he is actually assaulting these people, surprising them. Can't the police go in and charge him with assault? Uh, we're, we're documenting life on the streets and we're selling it to the world. We're sending things to Istanbul, Turkey, to Tokyo, uh, to all over Europe. Not long after, and with lawsuits and ruined lives aplenty, Ryan McPherson and Indecline Productions sold off the bum fight's intellectual property to outside investors. We figured it wasn't worth it. Money was never a huge object to, to any of us, and so we said <clears throat> we'd better get out before this gets out of hand. This left the new proprietors of this den of iniquity with a problem. How do you continue to capitalize and pull profit from abject callousness if the authorities and the public at large are wise to your nonsense? Well, you gather all the B-roll, unused footage, and deleted offcuts from the first tape and spread them extraordinarily thin over a few more volumes. Where, where are you, man? I'm in town. What happened? I got busted with methamphetamine and uh, some girl was trying to suck my dick up on the track. By bum fights three and four, unhoused individuals are barely present, making up mere minutes of these hour-long ordeals. So, how did the editors opt to pad them out? It'll work. It'll work. Well, with fan-submitted injury footage, transphobic interludes, archival clips of riots, police brutality, public defecation, dead animals, and at least one incident of a real man firing a real gun into a real group of people. A 2014 study conducted by the National Coalition for the Homeless perfectly articulates the unfeeling insidiousness of these tapes, concluding that 
In these videos, the homeless body is at once nothing, and viewed as a worthless leech on society, and not nothing, a very commercial entity to be capitalised upon. In other words, Donnie, Rufus and their compatriots are there to be used up until they're broken, then tossed back in the trash. Uh, they'd get paid uh, a couple beers and uh, be promised a whole lot of money if they would just keep doing these things, you know, keep fighting each other, uh, keep doing a bunch of dangerous stunts and eventually down the line you'll get paid a lot of money. So that's what kept them going and, and uh, as time went on they realised it really wasn't going to be coming their way. So, other than financially incentivised barbarity, let's look at why bum fights exists and the brain scrambling lengths those behind this series went to to try and justify their sadism. Why in, in the world would anybody buy this thing? The bum fight's party line is that they're shining a light on the darkest corners of inequality, and the fact they make a substantial amount of money from that is just an unfortunate coincidence. They made claims of selling over 300,000 copies at $20 a piece, so that would be $6 million that they made, and that, that was before it even went public, so who knows how many they sold after that. If you sit and scrub through every second of bum fight's footage that exists, as I have, You'll quickly realise that the financial incentive of milking misery for every endorphin rush drop of selfishness and schadenfreude is the be-all and end-all of why this came to be. There's a nasty but not insignificant part of the human psyche that looks to affirm our standing and sense of identity by weighing our worth against the welts and helter-skeltering circumstances of others. It's not nice, but it is important to consider the dark impulse some people have to let out a relieved sigh at the misfortune of others, as their internal monologue reminds them, thank god it isn't you. That's the bum fight's brand in a nutshell. However, if, in decline, the self-proclaimed decentralised art collective, creative controller of the first instalment and format programmer of bum fights is to be believed, every brutal bout of unusual punishment doled out on those less fortunate isn't exploitative, but rather an elaborate and intellectually minded work of art. In decline, and those who would eventually buy out their stake in the bum fight's IP, still attest that all of this is a document of displacement and dislocation, a provocative documentary representation of the scabbed over divide between the haves and the have nots. Looking out for the welfare of, of the homeless, and uh, I think this video uh, points out the problem of the homeless society. And You're looking, and you're, you, maybe I missed that, you're looking out for the, the welfare of the homeless? If you squint hard enough, you could maybe get on board with the idea that this is all some covert act of social justice. But then if you open those eyes and watch one second of this shit, or read a single interview with these chuds, you'll be able to take their fagazi philanthropy for the camouflage it is. Are you abusing the homeless with this uh, film? No, we have a mutually beneficial relationship with the homeless. We have, we have changed a, a lot of their lives. We have changed a lot of their lives. To highlight the gap between what the producers of Bum Fight say it's about and what it's actually about, let's look at the warnings that open each tape so we might break down why every word of these disclaimers is absolute bollocks. The producers of this video do not support the actions depicted in this video. This is transparently false, given how frequently the producers willingly participate in these acts of harming and humiliation. And he's inciting a riot between two homeless people. Going so far as to act as getaway drivers for a mugging before giddily encouraging someone to rob cars with a hammer. Fighting and violence in general is whack. 
Now, this rings pretty hollow given the name and premise of this entire enterprise. Not to mention, sequences like the transparently titled Executive Producer vs. Random Crackhead. <laughs> we do not believe it's funny or cool to antagonize homeless people. This statement stands in direct opposition to the marketing for these videos, which proudly boasts the base pleasures of, quote, drunk bums beating each other silly. For people to go out and want to film somebody's anguish and enhance that anguish by plowing them with alcohol and, and money and, you know, not even a decent amount of money uh, is, you know, the purpose of this video is to promote awareness through satire of the ever-increasing global epidemics of poverty, violence, addiction, and lack of education. This isn't just demonstrable proof that nobody involved knows what the word satire means. It's a calculated, cowardly, and downright sinister attempt at the freedom of speech defense, wherein they can couch the exploitation and denigration they perpetrated for vast sums of money in wanky notions of artistic expression and transgressive progressivism. There's no exploitation there. It's just all good, friendly filming. It's not, in, you know, in any way exploitation. I never saw it as that. There's no exploitation there. It's just all good, friendly filming. As the creators and producers state in Rolling Stone's Oral History of Bum Fights, a source that's been invaluable to this video, series creator Ryan McPherson stated, I can see how easy it is to look at the situation and scream, exploitation, but I did more for those guys than anybody. Which is a wild thing to say for someone who kickstarted a franchise in which the producers paid a destitute woman to defecate in public, made a busker eat a raw frog in exchange for a guitar, forced drug-dependent men to fight in a swimming pool for bags of crack cocaine, and so on and so on. Yeah, I'm good. Get your d started, right? Yeah, I'll get your d started. The In Decline Artistic Collective's response was to simply opine, Everybody was offended by what we did, but what we did was show them what they walk past every day. Do I feel remorseful? No. <laughs> oh, I love this, dude. I, I, I love this. Good to know that they are also cool with propagating a media empire in which a man is paid to punch a hole in his penis, an addict is chained to a pole and forced to go through withdrawal with an arm's reach of drugs, Yada yada yada. Uh, yada yada yada. More of the worst sh I've ever seen. Yada yada yada. Yada yada yada. Yada yada yada. Yada yada. Now let's take one last look at the final part of the disclaimer that opens these tapes. Help those who are less fortunate. Spread love, not hate. Which is a very sweet bow of bullshit on a compilation that frequently mocks those who intercede on behalf of those denied housing. Absolutely disgusting. Yes, no, Taking disgusting. the out of a man you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, yourself mister. As if the idea of using and abusing at-risk individuals for profit without offering them financial reimbursements or back-end royalties wasn't inexcusable enough for these self-professed artists, let's just remember that they are calculatedly targeting these folks because it offers them immunity to lie about clearance and consent given that many of the folks who were filmed for bum fights were of no fixed address and unwilling to reach out to law enforcement, given outstanding warrants and their habitual drug use. In a transparent attempt at damage control, later volumes of bum fights show how nice the producers are, because, uh, they took Rufus indoor skydiving? Oh, and here's one participant holding a waiver. Only, yeah, here's the thing about consent. You cannot legally enter into a contract or offer enthusiastic consent if you are under duress, intoxicated, or lacking the mental capacity to parse and properly consider the nature of the contract. Both of them under oath here testified that when you've been drunk for 30 years, you'll do about anything for a drink, and Mr. McPherson knew that which instantly voids claims made by the producers that the folks they cajoled into devastating their physical and mental health were doing so knowingly and willingly. 
I mean, in later bum fights releases, after seemingly relishing in substance use disorder, they've now moved on to voyeuristically filming someone going through cold turkey. Up, dude. What's up? How you guys are denying me a hit of crack? You don't need crack. No, man, fuck you. You don't need to be fucking filming. I met you motherfucker smoking, dude. And diversifying into other tape releases that are pretty much just snuff compilations. This killing has been done by people that were out of their mind. I mean by people that were drug addict or something, because I don't think a human in, his, in all his mind, even with all the hate in the world, would do that. For a time, a select handful of just awful individuals had built their empire of dirt. But thankfully, it would soon come crashing down. Oh, okay, well, it looks like we've started something here, and so yeah, I guess we did move a little bit of something along, you know. Might may not be the right thing, but, you know, whatever, it's something, I guess. Uh, in some ways, it's kind of sad that it's so um, successful that people want to see other people hurt. They want to see other people suffer. And, and I've made multi-millions off the Bonfice video series. I'm not surprised at my success. It's a sick world. Bumfights became an e-commerce blockbuster, one of the most pirated independent series of its era, and an under-the-counter word-of-mouth success. Whilst being shunned by most brick-and-mortar establishments, because even capitalism knows to keep their indifference to poverty on the down-low. Cause I'm not finna fake for these pack of wood. Get out of my business! In the UK, the British Board of Film Classification refused to rate it, given the tapes, quote, Detailed portrayal of violent or dangerous acts, callousness towards victims encouraging aggressive attitudes, and taking pleasure in pain and humiliation by exploiting the physical and other vulnerabilities of homeless people. No, there's nothing there that, that's, that's, you know, that's worth going apeshit about, like you're, you're, you're suppressing my freedoms. Seeing their chickens coming home to roost, Indecline squirreled away their mail-order fortune, then quickly unburdened themselves of the bumfight's intellectual property for $1.5 million. And despite their proclamations that this was all a politically charged art piece intended to help the unhoused, as per my research, it appears they've given precisely fuck all of that money to their victims. <laughs> oh, oh, shit! Other than a community service order and probation for illegal fight promoting, most members of In Decline escaped any lasting repercussions. They still pop up now and again with their basic, covifi, drumpf protest art that doesn't go beyond the most obvious and infantile execrations of political pundits. But their legacy is, and always should be, one of putrid cruelty. <sighs> Oh my god, oh. Ryan McPherson, who, if you remember, started this whole endeavour, ended up on trial for a number of felony and misdemeanour counts relating to bum fights. And if you've paid attention to this video thus far, you can imagine the empathy and seriousness with which he handled the case. Every day we went to trial and we get scolded by our attorneys for laughing. There was one point where uh, a woman was testifying how she was very distraught over seeing uh, two of the homeless men fighting at Mr. McPherson's uh, enticement. When she was crying in court, Mr. McPherson was giggling and laughing out loud. Eventually, he would be jailed for three months and found liable for over $300,000 in damages when a court determined that inciting violence and manipulating inebriated men into taking chunks out of one another isn't a public service, no matter how many insincere disclaimers you nail to the top of your tape. When we went to jail, I, I just took it in stride and figured, okay, well, here's a life lesson that I'm about to learn. And... Then, in 2014, McPherson made global headlines again when he and an associate became the subject of an Interpol manhunt and international arrest warrant for allegedly stealing and then trying to mail the decapitated head and severed extremities of a deceased infant from Thailand to the United States because he thought it would be funny. If I want to do something, I usually do it. Um, there's consequences, but it's all about staying under the radar. <laughs> oh 
the two producers who snapped up the rights to bum fights, who would operate under the aliases Ray Leticia and Ty Beeson, cobbled together some sequels and spin-offs from unused footage, licensed clips, and other documented acts of violence. For the head of crack cocaine, you give up millions of dollars off the CD. Okay, so five dollars, and you give all your proceeds from the video back to us. Yeah. We're gonna crack. Yeah. In a now infamous act of trolling, Beeson would appear on the Dr. Phil show dressed as the daytime host, where they would brag about their uncaring affinity for hurting the unhoused. We don't just sit there and give them our pocket change and say good luck. We put them to work, because there's a lot of people that are addicted to violence. They want to see homeless people doing crazy things, it's something that this world needs. Before being ejected from the studio. No, I'm not finished talking to you. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Why can't you answer how much money you're making on this film? Because I don't have my CFO with me right now. Now for the people who actually matter in all of this. I mean, these guys are like, I can honestly say, these people are deviates. They're insane. They're... <clears throat> Following his bum fights infamy, Donnie continued to wrestle with an unsheltered existence, compounded by alcoholism and ongoing disabilities for many years before finding comfort in rehabilitation and a sober living space in San Diego not far from where this whole thing began. The hurt that I went through, and then to come to find out that, that they, were made, they made money off of that, uh, hurting other people, it's not right. We were being used for their personal gain. Rufus, the face of bum fights, most famously known as the stunt bum, collaborated on a tell-all memoir about his struggles, settled down into a quiet life, and became a beacon of hope for the National Coalition for the Homeless. Oh, I have a job that I'm done. I have my life back on track. Uh, and I look back where I was at, and... Uh, I just, I don't want to go Then in 2017, tragedy struck when an 18-wheeler ran a red light, T-boning Rufus' vehicle and killing him instantly. Nobody involved with the production or who profited from bum fights has ever issued a public statement of remorse or apologised to anyone involved. Yeah, he's really? pretty funny. The whole idea of bum fights is one of taking away an individual's worth, an individual's humanness, an individual's right to be human. The butt of the joke bumification of those afflicted with substance use disorder, mental health conditions, the economically deprived, and those unable to secure housing didn't start or end with bum fights. Nor is the comedic commodification of their struggling circumstance some unquantifiable phenomena. By amplifying their otherness and experiencing their poverty through the abstraction of pixels and punchlines, we're all encouraged to vicariously relish the gut punches without putting ourselves within a quarter mile of the gutter. Each of us encouraged to buy and sell those who are deemed politically and economically worthless, so we don't have to reckon with their humanity, societal frailty, or the shameful limits of human empathy. I mean, we live in a world where it's not just politicians that view unhoused people as inconvenient obstacles rather than actual people. Pop stars have gotten in on it. For the love of Christ, just take one look at the news this week to see how much of a problem this still is. A law that not only criminalises rough sleepers and raises the prospect of them being sent to prison, but now rough sleepers could be given a fine of up to two and a half grand if they smell bad. 
I mean, you gotta laugh, right? You gotta laugh, or you'll throw a fucking brick. Bum fights is a symptom, not a cause. It didn't exist in a vacuum, nor did it magic money from the ether. The creators and producers are, in my humble journalistic opinion, remorseless pieces of shit who giddily strip minds the marginalised of dignity and safety, then tried to wash their hands in whataboutisms and vapid pretensions of artistic licence. And in doing so, they delivered what a niche in the market was demanding. And it just makes me angry to think that there are people all over the world who are buying this and who are showing it to their friends and just laughing about these, these poor guys. I don't have a clever way to end this video, and I'm not going to boil down an ethnographic and sociological stain on the Western world to some platitudes or a comforting conclusion. I'm just begging each and every one of us to give just a fraction more of a shit about those pushed to the fringes and never again allowing anything like bum fights to hijack the cultural conversation away from empathy, activism, and an outstretched hand for a demographic who don't and have never deserved any of this. A thank you to our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire M D, Becky O, Kay Kraus, Jennifer Fetish, and Nicholas Lair Revere, and all these amazing folks who support us over on Patreon. If you have any recommendations for films, TV shows, or documentaries that factually and empathetically advocate for those without housing, let me know down in the comments. And if you take a look in the description below, you'll find some further reading and links to non-profits and charitable organisations that aim to assist the unhoused and better the lives of at-risk communities. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is In Frame Out.